Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. In this video, I want to talk to you very briefly about intermittent fasting or just fasting in general with intermittent fasting kind of thrown in. This is not a video on the science, the benefits or the drawbacks or whatever the case is, because that science is for the most part and has for, the, for a very long time been pretty well defined. There's lots of newer things, of course, that we learn uh, we get more data, we deal with uh, more demographics, more variables that are thrown into the mix. But for the most part, when it comes to human physiology and understanding what happens when you don't eat food, depending on who you are, what what um, metabolic sort of scenario you're in, the science is defined. We know pretty much everything we do need to know for the most part. Uh, but before I get into this, uh, please go ahead and make sure that you um, give us a like if the video helped you and you understood what we were talking about um, in it. Uh, give us a like, the thumbs up, make sure that you subscribe as well. That's really, really helpful to our channel. And by the way, if you haven't done so, you can actually go over to our uh, Facebook. We have a private Facebook um, group as well for those of you that want to be or, or become certified and qualified as a personal fitness trainer. So be sure there is a link in the description uh, box that you can also click on to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, this video, I'm not gonna go into the science of fasting and what, what physiological changes happen. You can Google, you will get a million hits just on YouTube alone on videos. Very, very intelligent very smart people that will give you all the information you need. Again, from the perspective of a personal trainer, it's not whether or not fasting in and of itself or intermittent fasting as a uh, method or part of your methodology for losing body fat. It's not a question of if that is effective. Of course it is. The, the simple, the simple uh, elements behind the physiology of fasting, that's been documented for, for decades. We've known this information, that is old news, okay? Stop eating and things happen to your body. And the main things that we see happen to the uh, human bodies, so to speak, the ones that we're dealing with, i.e. clients or ourselves, is modulation of blood sugar. And that's really, now are there other components to your physiology that are going to be modified, that are going to change both beneficially and detrimentally? Absolutely. We don't have enough time on this video for me to get into that with you. But here's what I will say. Um, is intermittent fasting something you should do um, on a regular basis? And my answer to that is, sure, do whatever you want to do, right? Read up on the research yourself. Um, make a decision, make a determination as to whether or not it's beneficial. Do it. Remember, a lot of what we have always done in the fitness industry, now I'm talking decades ago, at least when I first started back in the 1980s, um, we didn't have a lot of data, any research per se, um, on average healthy um, athletes, average healthy people to tell us, oh yeah, yeah, eat between the hours of 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. We didn't have that information, at least the average person didn't. Um, so we experimented on things, right? And we always experimented. And if something worked, we kept doing it. Um, for the most part, the research community in a lot of, a lot of times followed up on what we were already doing as competitive bodybuilders and weightlifters. And they were verifying what we already knew worked. Okay, the idea of eating multiple meals throughout the day, smaller meals throughout the day. Well, that has been um, essentially uh, put to the side. That's the way we do it. There is data that says you can fast, you can eat six meals a day. There's other data that says, oh, no, 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 only eat once a day or twice a day. And that's going to have beneficial effects on your blood sugar levels. You see, this is why we don't want to get into the science, because again, we could talk about this for weeks and months. But the question here in front of us again is, should you do it? You as a trainer, uh, personally, Sure, do whatever you want. If it works and it helps you and you feel better and it helps you to accomplish your goals, absolutely, go for it. Make sure you write it down. Keep a log of the things that you're doing. That's very helpful um, for you to do that for yourself. But here's the real question and one that I'm going to uh, give you a very definitive answer on, which is, should you recommend it to your 
paying clients? Should you recommend it to your family members? And the answer is no, 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 you never. By the way, that is outside your scope of practice as a personal trainer. So the overarching, the overarching variable that governs whether or not you're telling people to do the Mediterranean diet or this diet or the grapefruit diet or the cabbage soup diet. Yeah, those are real, by the way. Go ahead and Google them. Um, is is that's outside your scope of practice. Now, developing meal plans and doing those things that are within your scope of practice in your state from a regulatory perspective, those are what you want to stick with. Okay, the fact that intermittent fasting from a research pers perspective shows many benefits to any person, whether it's the whether it's an athlete or the average client or um, an obese individual, just because there is research that yes, definitively says, well, at least in those research studies, it's going to have a beneficial effect on modulating blood sugar levels, yada, yada. It's going to change the way the body uh, metabolizes glucose. Yes, all of those things, that's fine. There's a thousand, and I'm being conservative, when I say a thousand studies that are that have been done and are being done on the regular just go to the a journal of you know clinical nutrition or any of these journals they're doing a ton of research on this and that's great but the answer to the question of should you be doing intermittent fasting and giving your clients guidance on that the answer is no what are you doing we already know what works we know what works now if you have a physician that has that you have you have your clients dealing with or a, a certified nutritionist, right? You have somebody that has a clinical um, sort of dog in the game here. If there's clinical connection, then you acquiesce to them. If they're clinician, their nutritionist or their GP, their, their general practitioner, primary care, family, you know, family uh, doctor says, oh yeah give this a try, that's on them to do that. But for us as trainers, no, 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 no. And by the way, you don't put people on any diet. See, we don't use the word diet. We, <laughs> we just don't even use that term. We don't put, put people on diets. Okay. That again, that is outside your scope of practice. Depends on the state that you live in, just so you know. But again, I don't want to take too many rabbit trails on this. The answer to the question is no, and the main reason, I'm gonna, there's a number of reasons, but the main reason we don't do these unique diets, quote, diets with people is because for the most part, they are unsustainable. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. It is the unsustainability of those, in the, it's, you just can't do it. The lack of discipline that is just sort of the, that is the way it is with the average client. They are disciplined in certain ways, but the average person simply does not have the sustainability to live a lifestyle where they are now inputting into their normal everyday life these um, sort of strange, bizarre, intermittent ways of dealing with their food intake. The average person simply is unable to sustain the ketogenic diet, unable to sustain intermittent fasting. That's why it went from fasting to intermittent fasting, because now with intermittent fasting, it's a little bit easier for an individual to maintain sort of the daily disciplines. And, and there'll be folks that will tell you, do it once a week, do it twice a week. And then you can build at the end of the day, the average client that you are dealing with, they're living their life. They've got families, they've got Things going on that just will not allow them, for the most part, to uh, psychologically move into this sort of uber-disciplined way of eating uh, for them. Some people can do this with no issues. And I've had clients like this where they will maintain very strict, very disciplined eating patterns. By the way, if a client is able to maintain very disciplined, very strict patterns of eating, I don't have them intermittent fast. I have them on a normal, normal nutritional plan, which is eating multiple meals throughout the day, small meals throughout the day for the average client. And that's going to be, that's going to vary, of course, for the clients. But on the, but on the point here of intermittent fasting, it is just another way 
to kind of sneaky sneak in a um, a method or a operational component of nutrition of eating that's going to solve the issue or or accomplish the goal that the client has, which is generally to do what? Lose body fat. Come on, folks. That's what people want to do. They want to lose body fat. 99% of all the clients I have ever dealt with and that you'll ever deal with as a trainer want to lose body fat. There are any number of clients in that grouping that also want to gain lean body mass. And we want to help them do that. Gain bone mass, for instance, increase bone density. And that's going to happen from the resistance training as well. But the point is, is that the average, that's what people want to do. Come on. They want to feel better. They want to lose body fat. And that's how it works. You start losing body fat, dropping body weight because of body fat, you will feel better. You'll sleep better. You add all of these variables in and you're at the, you're sort of at the end point here, <clears throat> excuse me, where it comes down to your nutrition. And if you can get your nutrition, what we call dialed in, meaning multiple meals throughout the day, you ain't going to get hungry. You understand this is unsustainable. The ketogenic diet, all of these, and I and I bring those in because those are still being, you are being pounded, pounded with this stuff. Every day you see another, what we call flavor of the month. But at the end of the day, you've got to just get into a regimented eating plan of eating multiple meals throughout the day. That's going to be the best for the average client, for the average human being. That seems to work the best. We have historical data that just um, takes care of any, any questions people might have with respect to that. So when it comes to fasting in general, of course you will lose weight. If you stop eating food, guess what happens? You lose weight, okay? You lose body weight. It's going to be lost in the form of body fat. It's going to be lost in the form of muscle tissue. It's going to be lost in the form of any part of your body that can provide caloric value right, in the metabolic processes that demand caloric values, right? So um, you will lose weight, stop eating. But again, the problem with that is, is that that's not going to accomplish the ultimate goal. And the ultimate goal is to lose body fat and to do it over the long haul. So there's got to be what we call sustainability. So keep in mind, if you want to do intermittent fasting yourself, see how it works, see if it helps you, it's going to make you feel better. Absolutely. You will feel better after intermittent fasting for a couple of days. I don't know anybody that doesn't. Um, now try doing it for a week with a job where you work 10 hours a day, stressful lifestyle, family, friends, kids, husband, wife, whatever the case is. Yeah. You see, it's unsustainable. So whether or not the physiology is correct, and again, like I say, look it up, there's great benefits to it. Trying to do that as a long-term strategy for body fat loss, lean body mass gain, it doesn't work out. So there is the answer to your question. No, don't do it unless you want it to, but definitely don't be um, suggesting it to your clients. And when your clients are telling you that they want to try doing it, then you very, um, what's the word? Kindly, nicely, um, yeah, don't be mean about it, but just let them know, no, you need to be on a more established regimented meal plan that feeds your body on the regular throughout the day. And that's what's going to suppress the hunger pangs in general and provide them the ability to get more nutrients into their diet. So, boy, there's so much to talk about on that uh, topic. But at the end of the day, I just wanted to give you some information, my take on the um, intermittent fasting fasting flavor of the month. So if this, like I said at the very beginning, if it was helpful, write the word understand in there. If you got any questions, please write that in the comment box. That's what it's there for. The thumbs up, remember, subscribe. You know the deal. Head over onto our Facebook page. If you are interested in becoming a certified personal trainer, right? Um, but not only that, you got to be qualified. You got to learn how to do this. Then please, like I said earlier, click on that link in the description box, that's going to take you to our website. You can go ahead and get set up with a uh, with a, uh, a counselor that will help move you through the process of getting you on board the Body Design University train, so to speak, become a certified personal trainer. If you have any questions, please let us know. As always, um, I, I like to tell everybody that on Wednesday nights, if you're able to, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 
uh, we have a little study group that gets together and we use a, a study a study tool called Quizlet. If you've ever heard of Quizlet and you've used it, that's great because it's it's actually a really good tool. Most folks have never played Quizlet live. It's a way that an instructor, teachers can actually take the study sets that are used in Quizlet and create this competition. It's a lot of fun. We do it for 30 minutes, six o'clock to 6.30 p.m. every Wednesday evening. And again, you have to go into that link because um, you've got to be a student of Body Design University to get access to it. But go ahead, click in there, and we would love to see you on Wednesday evenings in our live exam study. As always, it's a pleasure coming to you, bringing you this information. We'll see you next week.